What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's weekend was good. My name's CJ. This is Out of Bounds and in today's video we're going to be looking at some single stat player props for tonight's NBA slate. We've got a handful of games here to take a look at. I'm going to be talking about some points, some assists, uh, no rebounds for this video, but I do have one three-point prop that I want to talk about. So mostly point props and some assist props, and I've got a couple other little things trickled in. But if this is your first time on the channel, definitely hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. It is going to become more and more important that you have notifications turned on. Because things in the video that I discuss, if you don't catch them right away, they will be changed within about an hour or so. So having notifications turned on will definitely be your best friend. Please do it. It helps me out quite a bit as well. So I've got a subscription goal here in mind. Now we're uh, just past 1,120 subscribers. I'd like to get to 1,200 subscribers. That would be awesome to hit that by the end of the week. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do. And uh you know, I think we can get there. Now, the like goals have been a little lofty lately. I've been jacking them up. I kept increasing them, increasing them, and see if I can finally get ahead of you guys. And I think I finally have. So we're going to bring them down a little bit. We're going to push it back down to 44 and a half is the goal. I'm going to take the over, meaning we got to hit about 45 or more likes on today's video in order to achieve that over. So without further ado, let's talk about some NBA news real quick. Of course, we've got Bradley Beal, one of the biggest news stories of today that's going to impact Russell Westbrook and the rest of these Washington Wizards. Easy for me to say. Bradley Beal dealing with a hamstring injury. He's going to be out for the Wizards until at least Friday. Of course, him and Steph Curry have been going back and forth. They've got a scoring battle, a scoring duel to take the scoring crown uh, underway. So we'll see how that plays out. LeBron James looks like he's going to be returning for the Los Angeles Lakers on Tuesday, so that doesn't impact today's slate, but that is important news to discuss as well. Uh, let's move on down here and see who else is impactful uh, for injury news today. we got Carmelo Anthony dealing with an ankle injury. He's questionable for Portland on Monday, so we may see Carmelo. We may not. Looks like Kelly Olynyk is dealing with an ankle injury. He's questionable for the Houston Rockets on Monday. He's been playing pretty good basketball ever since he got traded from the Houston, or from the Miami Heat to the Houston Rockets. So, be interesting to see if he suits up. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Utah's Mike Conley continues to be out for the Jazz, so we're not going to see Mike Conley tonight. Uh, he's missed quite a few games here lately. Let's see what else we've got here. Kevin Porter Jr. dealing with an ankle injury. He's out again for the Rockets on Monday. So the Rockets might be pretty shorthanded without KPJ, without Kelly O. Uh, so you got to keep an eye on that injury news for the Houston Rockets. Christian Wood, another guy here dealing with an ankle injury. He's questionable for the Houston Rockets on Monday. So I don't know, man. Maybe the Rockets are looking like a uh, team who doesn't have anything to play for, and they're looking to rest some of their talented players. Why put the extra mileage on these guys uh, when you're not going to sniff the postseason this season? So that might be their mindset here. But uh, otherwise, Pacers' Malcolm Brogdon dealing with a hamstring injury. He's questionable for Indiana on Monday. So we'll have to wait and see on Malcolm Brogdon news and see if he's uh, able to play for Indiana or not. Uh, Grayson Allen abdominal injury is out on Monday. So Grayson Allen's a little beat up right now dealing with a couple of different nagging injuries, but that's going to be it. Let's wrap up this news and get to some of these props because we got uh, eight of them uh, per usual to talk about. And the first one that we are going to discuss is this guy right here, Mr. Russell Westbrook, who is having just another historical fantastic season. In fact, he just uh, tied Oscar Robertson for the most career triple doubles at 181, and I've got to believe that he will do everything in his power to break that tie by the end of this season. So, no Bradley Beal tonight, Russell Westbrook up there at 26 and a half points. Let's go take a look at the game totals and spread, then we'll move into looking at what his points projection is over on number fire. And then from there, we'll head over to NBA.com. We'll look at his season averages, his last five game averages, and then we'll finally wrap things up over on RotoWire, where we could take a look at the different sports books and see how the action's coming in on the over or the under on all of these various props. So that's the format of the show. Let's get it going here. So we've got the uh, total here for this game, Washington Wizards at the Atlanta Hawks. Game tips off at 7.40 p.m. Over on prize picks, you can see it's 236.5 implied points. Pretty big total here, so I expect a lot of points to be scored in this one. 
Now, things are looking a little shaky here in terms of the spread, meaning that there's a chance that this game can blow out. It's a seven and a half point spread. Uh, I'm on the fence here. You know, do I think it blows out? Possibly. Without Bradley Beal for Washington, I think it's going to be hard for them to try and hang around in this game. But, you know, Westbrook is the uh, Energizer Bunny. He's going to do everything that he possibly can to make this one a competitive game. So, now that we kind of know how the game is setting up, we can just scroll down here. We got Russell Westbrook projected at 27.4 points, which is higher than 26 and a half. So, so far, it's looking like the over on Westbrook and these points is looking like the way to go. So let's move over to NBA.com. Now, NBA.com is totally free. Number Fire, the previous site we were just looking at, totally free. And the other site we're going to look at, Rotowire, is also totally free. So these are all free tools. All it takes is a little bit of time. A little bit of know-how and you can go and do this research yourself now if you don't have time to do it hey i don't blame you monday through friday is when i try to provide the most content because i know people out there are working hard so that's where these videos come into play and if you want even more content than i offer in these videos well that's where the patreon membership link down in the description below to discord patreon all that stuff is down there but offer a patreon membership that goes above and beyond and and gives you even more stats and props and player projections and things like that because you know i'm trying to help the working man or woman out who watches this channel so anyway russell westbrook for the season 22 points per game now that's quite a bit lower than 26 and a half but of course without beal uh, this is a totally different situation now in his last five games when we run that little report 26.2 points per game so he's right up there around that 26 and a half mark so that's a good sign there that was probably with bradley beal in most of those games if not all of those games so now you take beal out of the equation russell westbrook scoring and everything else should probably go up so from there we're going to move over to rotowire and type in westbrook's name and you can see that we've got a couple of Point props up. We don't have one up on DK, but across the board here at 26 and a half points, you've got an over minus 116. You got an over at minus 125. And then this last site here, action's kind of split. Uh, we're not really seeing any juice over or under on Russell Westbrook in this 26 and a half point prop. All in all, guys, I think he's playing with some extra added motivation, looking to break that triple double record. Hopefully, his scoring production is up now without Bradley Beal in the lineup. Totals are pretty high. Spread is a little concerning. Maybe it gets out of hand. Maybe it turns into a blowout, but hopefully it doesn't happen until later on in the game. Uh, on top of that, uh, the projections are looking good here for Russell Westbrook to go over 26 and a half points. So I'm going to stick with it. I think this is a game here where Russell Westbrook looks to uh, basically shoulder the load, put the team on his back, and uh, I think he can go over 26 and a half points against a pretty soft Atlanta Hawks backcourt. So there you have it for Russell Westbrook. Now, while we're talking Washington Wizards, let's talk about this other little guy here, Raul Neto. Now, Neto is at 10 and a half points. I think there's a chance for him to go over in this situation as well. So with Beal being out, I don't think Westbrook is the only sole beneficiary here. I think Bradley Beal's absence also helps guys like Neto, maybe Rui Hachimura. But in this case, I'm looking at Neto here. So at 10 and a half points, let's see if the over or the under is looking like the way to go. So back on number fire, you can see we've got the uh, points column highlighted yellow here, and he's projected for 11 points. So if we're looking to take the over on Neto in these points here, well, 11 or more is where we need him to be. So 11 is a great step in the right direction here. So let's move over to NBA.com. We'll do a little search, type in Neto's name. I control click because I like to have a new tab open here and keep the old tab open. And then you can see his player card, 8.6 points per game. Now that is quite a bit less than 10.5 points, but again, no Beal is a big, big impact here. Lots of usage opens up, lots of opportunities for other guys to score and things like that. So we're going to click stats, traditional splits, advanced filters, change this to the last five games and click run here. All right, so he's appeared in all five of the last five games. And his scoring average is up to 10.2 points per game. So that's quite a bit higher than 8.6. So this is a good sign. This puts him right in the ballpark of 10 to 11 points. Of course, we are looking to take the over in this situation. So we need him to be at 11 or more. All right, last but not least, let's check the various sports books across the industry here. 
We've got him at 10 and a half all over the place. And at 10 and a half, we've got him at minus 127 for the over, minus 124 for the over, minus 128 for the over, and last but not least, minus 120 for the over. So all four of these sports books like the over on Neto tonight. I do too. I think his last five games where his scoring averages are starting to trend upward is also a good sign. He's also projected to go for more than 10 and a half points. Another thing that works in our favor. Plus this game has very high totals. And it, even if it does blow out, I would expect a guy like Neto to probably get uh, additional run in a blowout where maybe Ru Russell Westbrook would see the bench a little early. So there you have it. I'm taking the over and sticking with it on Neto. Now, the other side of this game, we've got John Collins, the power forward for the Atlanta Hawks. Of course, they're taking on the Washington Wizards. So 15 and a half points for John Collins. I don't know if that's quite enough points. Let's go find out. We're going to do the little research together. So we've already talked about the game totals and the spread. So we're going to type in Collins' name here. Saves us a little bit of time. So 16.1 points is his projection over on number fire. Now, obviously, 16 Point one is more than 15.5. So the over is looking like the direction we need to be targeting in this situation with this player prop. So let's move over here to NBA.com. We'll type in Colin's name. Open up a new tab. Control click, command click if you're on a Mac. And you can see for the season, his points per game average is actually at 17.6. So that is 2.2 or 2.1 rather whole points more than uh, where he is projected for tonight. So let's see his uh, five game averages. Let's see if that scoring average goes down or if it's trending up over the last few games. So we click advanced filters, change all games to five games and click run it. See what happens. All right, so he's appeared in all five of the last five games, 25.8 minutes, almost 26 minutes per game. Now his scoring average is down. It's down to 14.6 all the way up from 17.6 to 14.6. So that's a three point difference here, guys. So he has not been scoring the ball very well over his last few games. Now, 14.6 is pretty close here to 15.5. It's not a uh, huge red flag for me, but it is a little bit of a concern that he hasn't been scoring closer to where he's been scoring for the season. So little little red flag, we'll call it here. So let's type in Colin's name over on Rotowire. And you can see we've got four sports books that have Point props up for him at 15 and a half. Now the first one here, minus 120 for the over. The next one, minus 16 for the 116 for the over. So not a huge, huge advantage or, or huge action there. Minus 125. And last but not least, minus 120. So all of them agree that the over is the betting favorite, we'll call it, is the way to go. The way that the action, the juice is flowing here is on the over. So He's got that going for him. He's got the fact that his season averages are also higher than 15 and a half. He's got the fact that the projections like him to score more than 15 and a half points. Plus, this is a high scoring game. And if we think about the matchup here. Who does Washington really have uh, for the likes of John Collins, for Clint Capella? Who's really going to get in his way? I mean, I don't really know anybody on Washington that's going to stand in the way of either one of these guys. So I am kind of leaning still toward going over on John Collins in this 15 and a half point prop. So I'm sticking with it. I don't see any reason, anything big enough for me to... Uh, to switch or persuade me to go under here. So the next one I want to talk about is also a point prop. And we're talking Draymond Green, power forward for the Golden State Warriors. Now they got a pretty tough matchup tonight against this Utah Jazz team. This game is one of the late games, 10, 10 p.m. tip off time over here on the East Coast and on prize picks. So Draymond Green at eight and a half points, initial gut reaction. Hmm. Under, maybe, under on eight and a half points. Let's take a look together, though. First thing we have to do is explore this game total. And look at the spread. So we've got a game total here of an implied 225 points. Not super high. Not like this Houston-Portland game, which is at 238. But 225 is pretty healthy. It's not terrible. And then we got a two and a half point spread with Golden State as the home underdog here. So spread is looking like a close competitive spread meaning this game doesn't look like it's going to blow out according to Vegas odds makers. So with eight and a half points in mind with the game totals and the spread being what they are, let's go ahead and type in Draymond Green's name. Now you can see right here, it's very faint, but he is a game time decision right now, a GTD we call that. So uh, gotta, gotta make sure Draymond is in the lineup tonight. If not, well, that's gonna throw a monkey wrench in everything and 
probably boost guys up like Wiggins, like Bazemore. So you got to uh, definitely stay plugged into the news throughout the day. Okay, so he's at seven and uh, seven point seven points, which is really close to eight points. If we rounded it up and called it eight points, that would still be less than eight and a half points. So uh, I'm liking the under so far here on Draymond Green. If he scores eight or less points and we take the under, we make money. Hopefully, so let's type in his name and look at NBA.com. Now for the season, according to his player card here, six point eight points per game. Now that is quite a bit less than eight and a half points. So I'm also liking. The fact that he's scoring less than eight and a half for the season. So let's move things along here. We're going to go look at his last five games and see how those shape up. Let's click run. And in the last five games, he has appeared in all five of those games, playing about 33 minutes per game. Now his scoring average is up a little bit, 9.2, but 9.2 isn't significantly higher than 8.5. still think there's a good shot that he can still go under in this situation. So I'm not too worried about this one. A little bit of a blip on the radar, but not something that I'm going to completely fade. In other words, walk away from this pick. So let's type in Draymond Green's name here. And we've got him up on all four of the major sports books at eight and a half points. Not really seeing any action here on DK. Uh, he's, he's an under here at minus 120. Uh, he's a minus 118 over, which is a little bit of a deviation from our previous sports book. And then finally, the last book here. Again, not really seeing any juice, any action on the over or the under. So not really getting a clear read here from the various sports books on how people are laying down their hard-earned cash. So kind of not uh, not helpful at all to us. But uh, the fact that his season scoring averages are below 8.5, uh, his last five game averages, they're a little bit higher than 8.5, but they're still in the same uh, neck of the woods, the ballpark here of 8.5 points. So I still think that there's a chance that he can go under and return closer to something around his season averages. Um, and then the projections. Yeah, the projections are lower than 8.5 as well. So I know it seems like a guy like Draymond Green with his name and his established uh, uh persona i guess we'll call it here in the nba at eight and a half points that doesn't seem like a lot of points seems like something that he, he can easily go over but you got to keep in mind that the big sample size the season sample size says he can't even score seven points per game on on most nights so uh you know gun to head i'll probably stick to the under here on eight and a half points this is a tough utah jazz team and you know just hope for the best here with draymond green which brings us to another Golden State Warrior and our last point prop of the show. And that is Kent Bazemore, who's at 10 and a half points. Now at 10 and a half points, I've got Bazemore going under here. Now Bazemore has the tendency to get hot. And, you know, he's earned the moniker for me as Kent Blazemore when he does catch fire. So at 10 and a half points, the under is a little bit risky. I'm not here trying to fake it or front it. So let's type in his name. We'll do the research together here on Bazemore. All right, so this is very, very close to where he's projected on price picks, 10.4 versus 10.5. So kind of a coin flip situation still here on the under or the over on this 10 and a half point prop. Not a super clear answer based on the projections anyway. But we're going to go look at his averages and see how those look, both for the season and the last five games like we do for everyone. So for the season, 6.8 points per game puts him quite a bit under 10.5. So his season average for scoring is not very good. Hasn't scored very well for the course of the season. Uh, so we got to go look at his last few games because he has uh, picked it up here in his last few games and, and take a look and see how he's been scoring recently. All right, so he's appeared in five out of the last five games, playing about 29 minutes per game. Scoring average is up. He's at 7.6 points, which is almost a full point more than a season average. But guys, 7.6, still quite a bit under 10 and a half, almost three full points under 10 and a half points. So the under is still looking like the way that I am going here. So we got to type in his name here over on RotoWire, and we'll take a look at the sports books. We've got him at. 10 and a half across the board here. Uh, the first site, minus 113 under, minus 113 over. Not very telling. Uh, the next one, minus 116 for the under. Okay, a little bit of action here on the under. That's looking okay. And then the next site, minus 120 on the under. And finally, minus 125 on the under. So we've got three out of the four books saying that the under is probably the way to go here, the favorite way to go here. 
Um, on top of that, his season averages and his last five game averages are both below 10 and a half points. Plus, we've got a projection tonight that puts him under 10 and a half points. So everything's lining up here for Kent Bazemore and this under. I have no reason. I see no reason to go under, but that is just me. You guys have to decide for yourself. I just put out the evidence, the information, and then you have to make the final decision. But uh, the under is looking like the way I would go here. All right, so that was five point props we just covered, which means we've got three more props to go. The next two are going to be assist props, according to my notes here. So let's move over to the assist category. And the first one I want to talk about is Ja Morant. Now, Ja Morant's at seven and a half assists. To me, that seems high, but he is playing the New Orleans Pelicans tonight. The game tips off at 8, 10 p.m. So in this situation, we know the Pelicans aren't very good defensively, especially their backcourt. Maybe John ja Morant can dish out more than seven and a half assists. Let's do the research here. Let's go to the game totals and the spread real quick. So we've got 228 and a half implied points with Memphis as a nine point home favorite. So there's a little bit of blowout risk, a little bit of blowout potential in this game with a nine point spread. You always have to be on the lookout and be a little concerned with that number. Let's type in John ja Morant's name. We will click the assist column here, and you can see that he is projected at 7.8 assists tonight. Now, that's closer to 8 than it is 7. So if we are looking to go over, well, then this is a good step in the right direction, a good first sign here. So we'll move back to NBA.com. Let's type in Morant's name, open up a new tab, and for the season, you can see he's dishing out 7.3 assists. Now, I wish that number was closer to 8, but it's not. It's closer to 7. So we got to uh, check his last five games here. Let's see if that number is trending up or trending down versus his season average. We'll click traditional splits. We'll click the filters. We'll change that to five. You know the drill. And then we'll click run it. All right. So in his last five games, he's appeared in all five. He's playing 36 minutes per game. His assist numbers are actually on a downturn, a downtrend. 6.8 assists is lower than 7.3 and also lower than 7.5. So, yeah, I'm a little concerned here. This is a little bit of a red flag. I'd call it a little bit more than a little red flag. I'd call this a, a, a red flag, just a red flag in general. Season averages and his last five game averages are both lower than 7.5 assists. So, it's looking a little dicey here. I might be flip-flopping on this prop. So, we click the assist button. Type in Morant's name, and you can see that across the board here. He is at seven and a half assists. Now they got him going over at minus 125, over at minus 130, over at minus 133, and finally, an over at minus 134. Now it takes a lot, it takes some big stones, we'll say, to go against these different sports books in Vegas. I usually don't like to do that. Uh, you have to be pretty brave here. So in this case, we've got projections that say he can go over seven and a half assists. And we've got Vegas, four different books, saying that he could go over seven and a half assists. But it flies in the face of both his season averages and his last five games. So I can understand if you don't feel good about it. But if you were forcing me to make a decision, I would probably just try to go for the over here on John ja Morant and these seven and a half assists. Do I feel comfortable about it? No. Does it feel like gambling? It absolutely feels like gambling. So there you go on Ja Morant. Now, hopefully this next assist prop is a little more friendly, a little more easy for us to just click the over or the under on. And that's Drew Holiday. We've got him at six and a half dimes here over on prize picks. They're taking on the San Antonio Spurs. Game tips off at 8.40 p.m. So let's head back to number fire. And we'll start things off by looking at the game totals and the spread in this one. So we've got 233 and a half points very good total in my opinion san antonio is a seven point underdog in this case though so not a uh, complete smash situation like this other game here 14 and a half point spread it's just a seven point spread so i think this is a good situation with the high game totals and the spread being somewhat close ish where drew holiday can potentially go uh for less than six and a half assists but but let's let's just see here let's open up the uh little search engine. We'll type in Drew Holiday's name. 
Wow, okay, so he's at 5.7 assists. So despite the totals and, and all that, they think that he's going to go for less than 6.5 assists here. So that is kind of lining up with my initial gut reaction. Let's go look at his uh, season averages, five-game averages, and see how that goes. Now for the season, wow, 5.9 assists per game, which is kind of low for a point guard. But you also have to keep in mind that there's some high usage guys on this team, both Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo, of course, and even Dante DiVincenzo. The ball is shared here on this Milwaukee Bucks team. So 5.9 assists for the season puts him under 6.5. Let's look at his last five games and see how those go. And when we click run on that report... He's appeared in all five of his last five, playing about 33 and a half minutes per game, and his assist number is actually up. He's at seven assists in his last five games versus 5.9 assists for the season, which means his assists are trending up. Meanwhile, we're looking to take the under here at six and a half. So really, this is kind of feeling like one of them situations where it could go either way, right? So let's look at RotoWire. We'll type in Drew Holiday's name. And across the board here at six and a half, we've got a minus 121 to start things off going under, minus 132 for the under, minus 133 for the under, and whoo, in the words of Nature Boy Ric Flair, whoo, minus 140 on the under. So I am liking the way that all four of these books are stacking up here. They're all in agreement. And, you know, this isn't just like little odds in the favor of the under it's pretty good numbers here minus 140 minus 133 132 so yeah the under is looking like the way to go we got projections that agree we've got uh, a game total that could potentially blow out it's high total but it could blow out at a seven point spread so yeah i don't see anything that's really scared me off of going under here on the six and a half assists unless you think that he's going to be closer to his five game averages in which case uh, i can i can see where you're coming from there so there you have it which brings us to our last and final prop of the day, which is going to be a three-point prop. More specifically, Joe Ingles at three and a half three-point makes. I am looking to take the under on Mr. Ingles, or if you prefer, Jingles. Hopefully, he doesn't jingle any bells tonight from the three-point line. So we got to go back here. Quick glimpse at the game total and spread again. 225 points, two and a half point spread. So again, not a super high total, but the spread is close and competitive. So let's look at Joe Ingles here. And look at me, I'm typing in jingles. I, I you know, I can't. I can't with myself sometimes. So let's open up his player card here. We got to dig in a little deeper. Player card doesn't show anything right off rip. So we got to click stats, traditional splits, change the advanced filters, and you can see that for the season, he's attempting six three-pointers or three pointers per game. And on those six attempts, he makes 2.8 three-point makes per game for the season. So 2.8 is quite a bit less than three and a half. So even if we rounded up and we were feeling generous, gave him three three-point makes, well, if we're looking to take the under here. Three or less gets us paid. So pretty good here so far on the season averages. So let's look at the last five games. We'll click run on this report. And on his last five games, 6.8 attempts, 2.6 makes. Still not coming anywhere close to four makes. Of course, he'd have to make four if we're looking to take the under here. He'd have to make four or more in order to break our hearts if we take the under. And I'm just not seeing it. Doesn't look like it's going to get done here. So last but not least, back to RotoWire we go. We'll type in Ingle's name. And we've got, what, three out of the four books have a three-point prop up for him we got minus 127 on the under minus 133 on the under and one more time for nature boy rick flair whoo minus 140 on the under so i'm liking the under all three of these books like the under the uh season averages are less than three and a half three-point makes and his last five games we're not really seeing a trend upwards in three-point makes in fact I believe it trended downward. So everything points to the under on Joe Ingles. And this is uh, shaping up to be probably one of my favorite props from today's video. So hopefully it helps you out, guys. If you got any value out of this video, definitely hit the like button for me today. Let's hit that like goal and double check. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on. As I said before, it's going to be imperative that you have notifications turned on going forward because these videos, they're going to have an expiration time on them, let's just say. Whenever I lock in, 
or mention any of these projections, they will change. Uh, you'll have about an hour or so to get them in before things start to shift. So there you have it. My name's CJ. This is Out of Bounds. Hopefully you found some good player props. And until the next one, guys, good luck tonight. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.